Hello, this is Fahad, and this is Energy System Lab 2, and today we'll talk about gas heat and gas burners, how do we troubleshoot them, and basic maintenance and uh, guidelines for the most common problems that can happen in a gas burner. So let's, let me just start by saying that if you know how to proficiently work with oil burners, gas would not be a big deal. Actually, gas is much better. Uh, in terms of combustion and it's easier to work with it just will involve a little bit more control so but the basic concepts are the same so let's talk about the combustion equation again hydrocarbon air spark heat getting co2 and water our hydrocarbon now is changed from oil to gas a lot of uh, towns now are changing from oil to gas basically if they have a gas connection nobody will uh, choose to use oil and uh, it's priced differently of course uh, a lot of people do not want to have gas in their houses because the storage is a little bit uh, costly unlike oil but uh, if your city has gas line probably most people will have gas however oil is still very common so uh, again if just if it just happened that somebody was using oil in a town and they just got new uh, gas lines and they're thinking of conversions a lot of companies that make oil oil burners they will give you a conversion kit that will go exactly into that uh, burner uh, to that boiler or furnace and it will be a complete good replacement so check with the manufacturer for that furnace or boiler and look for a conversion kit which uh, sometimes it will look a lot like uh, a gun burner, like an oil burner. It's just different outlet and different valve, which uh, goes to show you that it's uh, basically the same idea, not much to it. Okay. Uh, so igniters for oil are different than the, than gas. Again, if you think about it, before we used to have to atom uh, atomize oil to make it into small droplets. Now we have gas, so gas is very easy to ignite. Doesn't take much very small spark those are two types of igniters some of them can produce a spark and some of them are just heated glow stick they call it a glow stick where this is uh, a heater that will get too hot until it glows and it will tear uh, it will burn gas so gas ignite at a uh, lower temperature than oil and since it's already in a gas form it's easy to ignite we all st we still have some uh, again igniters where two metals are uh, meeting together and we have a small spark and in that case sometimes we have a pilot because we would like to to the pilot will have a flame small flame in it so we will use the spark to light the pilot and the pilot will light the main flame because we're trying to minimize the first puff of our gas happening when you turn on the gas probably you have noticed that if you, if you ever grilled with gas and you turn on the the grill in in less than a second if you don't have a ignition you'll have a puff and that puff can cause a problem over time so we don't want to have that we want a smooth uh, ignition especially if you have a small uh... okay here's some of the controls that you will have in gas there's a power board there's always a board which is kind of similar to the CAD primary cell we had in oil it's just different controls because this time before we turn on the gas or anything we first have to create an airflow so if we have a boiler this is my chamber before anything goes in so let's say this is my gun burner before anything goes into business we have to make sure there's an oil flow coming in and <clears throat> that oil flow will make sure that there's no pressure buildup here and also will help the mix the incoming air with the gas kind of like the same as oil but this time we want to make sure that there's a uh, fans uh, uh, pressure switch here that's and the air is flowing before we start so that's the main difference this is my igniter which again i think this one is not heated it's uh it's a spark operated different igniter again uh safety valve that's for the flow of uh, gas thermostat and this thermostat also uh, prove that there's flame inside the uh, the chamber so whenever so we, we don't use a cat cell anymore we use a flame sensor inside the flame 
to measure the amount of uh, uh, light we have in there. And again, sometimes uh, the flame we get from gas is different than the flame you get from oil. Okay, so if you look here, this is my glow stick, the heater over there. And we try to, uh, again, this is my oil valve. Again, we're not allowed to connect anything. Uh, a certified plumber has to come and connect your gas valve to the gas line. Uh, gas flows, goes through those little jets. And you see how the jets are pumping gas inside. There is air also incoming from the room in here as uh, primary combustion air. And the reason this air is coming in there, that's because we have pressure. No, it's because we're pulling air from the inducer fan in here. So air is being pulled out and in doing so it will draw some air along with the gas over here. So the glow stick will turn on, will turn on in here. It will light the first jet and all of them will follow right away because it's gas and gas is very sensitive to heat and it will turn, it will burn quickly. Okay, this is a front view of the uh, flame. I mean of the uh, furnace, the gas furnace. These are my burners, uh, the jets where the gas will go inside. This is my gas valve. It's uh, a diaphragm valve that will regulate the pressure. The heat exchanger is inside. So we are burning gas in this chamber. It is collected and going through the draft control over there and air is going through the chamber to be heated. So this is a draft combustion fan that's drawing all the air from here to the outside. And this is my heat exchanger over here where the incoming house air goes from here to here. So if you measure in your house air or residential air, if you put your combustion test here and you find any CO, that means that there's a crack in your heat exchanger and that is very common with the furnaces because the pipes are exposed to the fire. The life expectancy on those things are around between 10 to 15 years for the heat exchanger and most of those parts are built to last for this amount of time so it shouldn't be surprising if you have a heat exchanger for a boiler that's been there for 20 years. So again fan, combustion fan, inducer fan and fuel, gas valve, igniters in here and so on. Gas controls again, this is the flame sensor. It's not a cat cell, it's uh, guess if you have guessed it from the other class, it is a flame rod. Flame rod in some cases. We can also have a thermocouple. However, flame rod responds to, to uh, the flame faster than thermostat but it could be a different kind of thermal uh, very sensitive thermostat that will can that can detect the heat quickly and in this time the flame sensor is purple color unlike unlike uh, oil burners so these igniters this is an igniter And sometimes they do go bad. If you see that video that I posted about the most common problems, one of this is one of the biggest problems that they go bad and make sure that they are they have continuity. So this guy's checking for continuity and make sure they it is connected. Uh, so either it works or it doesn't. Unlike our transformer, remember in the past the transformer will give you different voltage. Here we don't need a lot of uh, voltage. We just need to make sure it has complete continuity. This is the control that we have for the board. If this is a simplified version of this control and probably you see that in the other video where we have a thermostat that goes to a control board that's operated by 120 volts. Blower fan motor is controlled by the board. Igniter, draft, is a vacuum switch that will check for airflow and a gas valve and a flame sensor. Uh, again, the control board here is uh, is not as uh, straightforward 
when it comes to diagnosis as a cat cell but again all these terminals are labeled one by one and it's good to go and look at the controls for in the board for that specific model and if this board and installed in a furnace that also coupled with an AC probably there will be a different set of connections uh, however again it's labeled just like the cat cell every terminal is labeled and uh, sometimes they can look a little bit intimidating because they have a lot of terminals but you always want to check the manual for uh, connections this is the inducer fan it's one of the most common problem that goes bad in the in the gas furnace usually they go bad a lot because they are undergoing a lot of pressure and because also filters do not get changed so the filter is what draws air through the heat exchanger if you don't change the filter every month or two months it gets clogged and the inducer fan will end up overworking and eventually the motor will burn and again from the troubleshooting video you'll see if it's overheated if it's cracked that means that it's overworking and probably it's time for it to go so if you have any questions please post those questions on the on the discussion board in the blackboard and also please watch the other three videos that have really good valuable information about gas and gas heat uh, i also have placed some uh, questions for review as a lab assignment just to check your understanding of this subject all right thank you